Timber harvesting and forestry in general should not be sustainable. Not only should it not be sustainable, but actively focusing on sustainability is doing harm to America's forests and forest economy. Now I know that's a bold and provocative statement, but if you stick with me, I promise by the end of the video, I'll have you agreeing with me. Or at the very least, you'll see where I'm coming from. So to understand this issue, we first have to define what exactly sustainability is. And we can define sustainability as And that's the problem, isn't it? What exactly does sustainability mean? The forests are an incredibly dynamic and resilient system. In Maine, in much of the northeastern United States, just 13,000 years ago, the landscape was scraped bare by giant glaciers. Only a few thousand years later, which is absolutely nothing in geological timescales, the landscape was once again flourishing with trees. Now, if forests can come back relatively rapidly from glaciation events, can the chainsaw or feller buncher really do a lot of long-term damage to a forest? And clearly you can say that sustainability isn't referring to geological timescales. It only means that we can use a resource in perpetuity without exhausting the inventory. Well, think about mowing your lawn. Every time you bring out that lawn mower, you are doing a sort of sustainable harvest of your turf grass. The problem is, turf grass is essentially worthless. In most cases, it's a non-native species. It's not growing to any appreciable size to provide any sort of uh, valuable wildlife habitat. And you're not selling the trimmings, so it's not providing any economic benefit. The only benefit turf grass provides is a little bit of aesthetic value. So what if we then used the forest analog of turf grass? What if we just had a fast growing forest that wasn't providing any real value of any sort? It might be sustainable, but does it, does it matter at that point? Now you could say, you know, Zach, you're thinking about this way too much, and that's absolutely true. I think about things way too much, and that's why I usually only get about four to five hours of sleep a night. But I would counter that you're not thinking about it enough. Probably you're thinking that sustainability might mean something like a light harvest, and unsustainable timber harvesting is something like a heavy-handed clear cut. Well, think about it like this. Let's take a million acres of forest, and let's say that every year you did a sprawling 200-acre clear cut. There was no regard for silviculture, no replanting. You just clear cut 200 acres out of the million acres every year. Well, it would take you so long to get through the entire land base at that point that those 200 acres aren't actually statistically significant in the overall patterns of the forest. You are going to be losing more wood to natural mortality every year than you're actually harvesting. That sprawling unsustainable harvest is completely inconsequential. And what about light and gentle timber harvesting? Well, let's take that same 1 million acres and say that you did a light harvest on 100,000 acres every year. Now, logistically, that might be a bit difficult, but bear with me. Let's say on those 100,000 acres, every year you removed 20% of volume. And after the harvest was completed, the forest still looked beautiful, the silviculture was nice, but you were just going through 100,000 acres and removing 20% every year. Well, it wouldn't take very long before you started to see the inventory on that land base diminish because the total volume you're removing every year is more than the forest is actually growing. So clearly sustainability has absolutely nothing to do with the type of forestry that you're doing. So how exactly is sustainability usually measured in the forest industry? And granted, there are various metrics and various philosophies around this subject. But one of the dominant ideas in the industry is the idea of the Annual Allowable Cut, or AAC. Now, in our last video, we discussed a little bit about forest growth rates. And in particular, we defined growth rates as a unit of wood volume by land area by time. So usually in the United States, that's cords per acre per year. So what the Annual Allowable Cut does is it estimates the total amount of growth on a land base. And it says, this land base is growing this many cords per acre per year. It takes that number, multiplies it by the total amount of acres in the land base, and says, this is the total amount that we can harvest every year and be sustainable. So theoretically, with this AAC, every year you're removing the exact amount that you grow from the land base and you can harvest the same amount in perpetuity. That must be sustainable. Well, there are two main problems with this. The first one is the measurement problem. You have to measure two different things to get this to work. The first thing you have to measure 
is your actual growth rate. And that can be incredibly difficult. And in fact, there's an entire field in forestry dedicated to this problem of growth. We call it forest inventory and forest modeling. And there's a lot of investment in these projects. Um, in many cases, land is actually systematically sampled every year to get an idea of the inventory. And then a lot of complex mathematical equations are used to try to estimate the actual growth and yield of that forest. But that's a very tricky science and it's very fragile to assumptions that don't always hold true. And actually there's a joke within the forest modeling community. All models are wrong, some models are useful. And that's kind of an acknowledgement that every model is going to have some sort of inaccuracy. So in many ways, it's impossible to know exactly how much a forest is growing. Now that in itself is not necessarily a problem as long as the landowner is acknowledging those limitations and providing a good margin of safety to their models. But then there's the other problem of measuring exactly how much is removed. And once again, that's fragile to different assumptions and errors. Now added together, these two metrics are absolutely going to result in inaccuracies that could create problems over time. Um, that's basically inevitable, but that's actually not my core problem with the idea of an annual allowable cut. To understand the true issue with the system, we have to remember exactly how trees grow. Now I mentioned it a lot, I'm gonna mention it again. Trees grow in a sigmoid shaped curve. So when they're very young, they're growing very slowly. As they build foliage and start to mature a little bit, they can photosynthesize a lot more effectively and they grow faster. Now after a certain point when the tree reaches senescence, its growth starts to slow down until mortality. So why is this important? Well, let's, go back to that million acres we have. And let's pretend that this million acres is full of mature forests. And we say we want to harvest it sustainably based on an annual allowable cut and model of growth. Well, what's gonna happen is because our trees are so mature, then we're going to be growing a fairly small amount of wood. Let's just say 0.2 cords per acre per year. So that means that over the entire million acres, Every year, we can harvest 200,000 cords. Great, so we do that. But something starts to happen. As we harvest that mature wood, the wood gets younger. And on average, more of that wood starts to get pushed into that younger cohort. So what happens to our growth rate? The growth rate starts to increase. As the growth rate increases, so does our annual allowable cut. So the more we cut, the more we can cut. And this is actually also something that's applicable with companies that have large planting programs. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a fan of planting and planting has benefits both for the forest and the bottom line. But what ends up happening when a company is planting trees is their average growth rate is increasing. And as their average growth rate increases, they can actually harvest more. So when you're planting trees, you're essentially enabling the harvesting of more trees because it's increasing the annual allowable cut. Now, importantly, this isn't inherently a problem. I'm a fan of fast growth rates. I'm also a fan of profitable and productive forests. So the problem isn't really about the growth rate or how much you're harvesting. The problem really lies in something called the quadratic mean DBH, which you could really just think of as the average diameter of the forest. Obviously, as a forest gets younger, its average diameter also decreases. Now, the problem here, as I've mentioned before, is that smaller wood is more expensive to harvest. And in fact, I'm gonna have a graph up here from a study about harvester productivity. I'm gonna leave a link to the study in the description, but essentially, as you can see, that as average stem diameter doubles, so too does harvester productivity, which is going to translate into cheaper harvesting costs. And of course, it does taper off as trees gets overly large because then they're difficult to handle. But nonetheless, the trend holds true that the smaller trees are, the more expensive it is to harvest that wood. As wood becomes more expensive, the profit margin begins to shrink and that forest and broader forest community becomes more vulnerable to shocks. Economic shocks such as deflationary events and a drop in prices, inflationary shocks such as a labor shortage, and even biological shocks such as an insect outbreak that could be catastrophic for the overall inventory and profit margin of the company. And actually this is a problem that I know is affecting a lot of forestry companies around the country that have 
based their models on this annual allowable cut system. The average diameter of the stands have decreased over time, and so too has the margin on that forest. And importantly, because of the world we're living in, because of the economy where you can't find labor, where there seems to be a giant economic shock every few years at least, it's important to understand that this system is dead. It's over. It's not working anymore. Sustainability has come to an end because it's unsustainable. So what is more sustainable than sustainability? My answer is being robust. Being robust against economic shocks, being robust against biological shocks, and being robust against any obstacle that might lay in the way of having a productive forest for the landowner and the broader stakeholders in the community. Now admittedly, being robust is probably just as hard to define as being sustainable, but it's also very difficult to satisfy with a simple metric, and that's the real benefit. It's not about looking at the QMD or the growth rate or the trees per acre or any one single metric. It's about looking at the overall picture of the forest and the strategy being used by the landowner to carry that forest into the future. And so I think one great way to make sure a forest is robust is by using something called area control. So the annual allowable cut in looking at cords per acre per year is a system known as volume control. You're controlling the amount of volume removed in order to achieve sustainability. Area control works a lot like the example of the million acres and 200 acre clear cuts. Let's just say that you had a thousand acres and you wanted to make sure that every tract of forest was harvested only when it reached 100 years in age. Well, all you'd have to do is harvest 1% of that land per year, which is 10 acres. If you only harvested 10 acres every year, absolutely without fail, you can make sure that the forest is gonna be 100 years old at the age of harvest. And this is something that doesn't require complex projects or expensive programs. All you need is a simple GIS program to track area, and even Google Earth could work. And importantly, even though it's simplistic, it can still be scaled and complicated as necessary. For example, you could have different age targets for softwoods and hardwoods, for different site classes, for different stand types, etc. And you can even have different values based on the type of harvest. But it's an objective system, it's not fragile to assumptions, and it can make sure that you maintain enough of a margin of safety to not fall victim to unknown economic, biological, and other shocks. Now, as a disclaimer, I have used the word sustainability in the past. I will almost certainly use the word sustainability in the future. Why? Because it's a lot easier to communicate kind of what you mean by using the word sustainable and sustainability than being robust. So just know that when I use the word sustainable, I'm using it as a proxy for this concept of being robust. Now it's worth mentioning that this is more applicable if you have a large enough land base to give yourself yearly cash flow from harvest. If you're managing a smaller land base, let's say 10 to 50 acres, sometimes it makes sense to manage on a more ad hoc basis based on the conditions of the stands. But nonetheless, it's important to understand these concepts. In the last video, we talked about forest growth and how to optimize forest growth. And in this video, I kind of want to talk about some of the dangers of over-optimization. So with all that having been said, I think that's enough for today. The sun is now peeking between the trees, overexposing my shot and making me quite hot. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something. And if you want to learn more about forestry and silviculture, I highly recommend you go to my website and download my free book, How to Read Your Forest. It's a great introduction to forestry, silviculture, land management, and the different types of silviculture treatments, the different types of timber harvest. And of course, it's an introduction to the different types of forest metrics that you need to be able to understand and take as a landowner and forester in your own right. So if you're interested, I'm gonna leave a link in the description and pinned in the comments below. And for those of you that are still watching, thank you so much. God knows that I don't watch every YouTube video I click on all the way through. So when you guys do, I really consider that a true honor. And so it's my mission to bring you more content like this, to bring you value and help you understand your forest and how to manage the forest for the future. So please like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Later.